everybody that's me again let's just do another update here it's been a while it's been a few months uh, one one reason is I haven't had anything to report I've I've been doing really well I've been feeling great I think I've done one cycle of phage uh, shortly after my last video you know, I was just felt some symptoms coming on and I took it and took it out so it was another success um, I was slowly climbing, so I was seeing very small increments, but continually going up with my PFTs. Uh, and then last month, I actually got really sick. I was coughing up a ton of stuff, um, not feeling well. And I said, okay, it's time to do another, another cycle of this. In previous videos, I had mentioned I was trying to get some inhaled meropenem. Well, I finally got my hands on it and made a plan and the idea was to start the phage it's a ten, it was a I was doing a 10 day cycle so I would start the phage go for five days and then start the inhaled meropenem and I'm doing uh, or the prescription was 500 milligrams and 5 ml of saline I did that twice a day now it's prescribed for 28 days but I actually stopped after two weeks and then I'll talk about why I made that decision so when I started, uh, before actually before I started the treatment, I wanted to send a sample of my sputum to the phage therapy center in Tbilisi, Georgia, so they could do their test on it and tell me, am I on the right phage, uh, or am I, what are my sensitivities and resistances to some known antibiotics. So I sent that off and I said, okay, let's start, the, start this cycle. When I started, I was down to, looks like, I'm looking at my chart here, 64, I was, I was just under 65%, which is um, my baseline at that point before that was the low 70s. So it looks like I peaked out at 72% back in somewhere between April and even through June, just kind of hovered around that 72 mark. So I knew when I hit that 64 mark, I was like, okay, it's, I gotta do something. So I started the phage and I didn't do the normal, like test my FEV every single day. I gave it some time and said, okay, I'll check it maybe two weeks. So I started phage and then five days later started the uh, inhaled meropenem and then continued to finish that phage cycle for five days and then did the antibiotics and at the two week, two week mark i decided okay let's let's see where i'm at and i have felt really good i mean to me i felt as if the phage was still doing its thing i was feeling great um, did i notice a significant difference compared to doing with the antibiotics not really i did notice a couple like side effects one was the fatigue i was so tired maybe it was the meropenem i don't know but I would get really, really tired, especially that first week. But I didn't have all the other symptoms I usually get with IV meropenem, where it's like constipation, diarrhea, you know, liver, kidneys going crazy, uh, just generally feeling awful. I just had some tiredness. That was the worst of it. But I could tell that it was working, so I just I stuck it out. And just yesterday I finished our I mean, two days ago, excuse me, I finished the full two weeks and then I did another test. And at that point, I was feeling very clear. I was just feeling great. In fact, when I stopped the antibiotic the day after and the couple of days after, I continued to just feel significantly better. You know, getting that, whatever, that residual of those drugs in my system kind of going away, even feeling better. So I did my last PFT two weeks after stopping the antibiotic or that I didn't stop yet but I, I made the decision to stop after I saw my results and I blew a full three liters uh, the highest I've ever blown is like 2.9 liters so I almost got a full tenth of a liter out in my FEV1 that puts me at my record so far at 75% I have not, I can't remember, again, I've, told, I've mentioned this so many times that my PFTs have just been climbing and climbing, and now I'm at 75%. Four years ago, my baseline was 82. I am close. I am so close. So really great results when you combine bacteriophage, 
and antibiotics. Great combo. <clears throat> so I had some concerns. One of my concerns were uh, resistance. Like, would I become resistant to the phage, similar to how I become resistant to the antibiotics? And uh, after talking with uh, Chris Smith, who's the CEO of Phage, phage International, it's kind of like uh, the kind of the, the point of contact here in the states for the Republic of Georgia, the Phage Therapy Center. I hope that was made clear. Probably not, but. <laughs> yeah, Chris really helps out here in the States um, communicate with the Phage Therapy Center in Tbilisi, Georgia. Um, he actually called me when they got my test results uh, from the lab there at Phage Therapy Center. They called him to, to kind of relay the results to me, and they were positive. I grew staff that time, so I typically grow Cepatia, but the staff kind of overwhelmed the Cepatia this time, or that's, at least that's what was cultured. And I am, there's good news with the results. One is um, there are like, like six kind of de facto boxed phages. And I'm highly, like I, I'm, three of them are highly effective for what I've got. They give you a rating system. And three of, one, one that I was on currently, and there's a couple other ones that would show some uh, promise. And then they also give you a list of antibiotics that show sensitivities and it was quite a good, it's a great list, 20 something antibiotics. And it shows you, hey, these are gonna, you're not gonna have any luck with these, with that bug, but they give you the rating system. And I'm still have a lot of options out there. Uh, now, for if it was a culture of Cepatia, I think that list would be smaller, probably significantly, but at the same time, uh, still really positive. And the question, I actually asked him that question, you know, I'm concerned about phage resistance. Now, <clears throat> I'm not an expert on this. I'm, I'm relaying information. But the likelihood of me developing a phage or even an antibiotic resistance through inhaled is almost none, I'll say zero, compared to uh, IV and oral antibiotics where your body create, has an immune response when they're ingested or put directly into your bloodstream, um, which kind of where the body will start to create those resistances supposedly inhale them, uh, but getting straight to the source, your body doesn't have that same immune response. So the concern, the risk of resistance uh, isn't there. So I could technically do this all the time, like just keep it in my system. Um, same with the inhaled antibiotics. They, now, that's with resistance. That's not saying it won't cause other side effects, right? I mean, you, you're going to still develop a toxicity of some of those drugs. But it's really good news for me to know that I don't run high risk of, of resistance doing them through the inhaled approach. So awesome. Uh, another thing I learned uh, with Chris, <clears throat> so the, pres the prescription or the prescribed, the protocol I've been following is 10 days. Uh, it's been suggested to me to amp it up and go a full three weeks of phage. So the next time I have to do this, which I will, I'll start phage, go five days, start the inhaled antibiotics as well, but carry the phage and the inhaled antibiotics for a total of three weeks. If I want to go longer on the antibiotics, I have that choice to go a full four weeks, which I may do. But uh, apparently this could really eradicate what's been growing because what, what the experience I've been having is I'll go 10 days, and still kind of feel like there's something lingering, but not knowing that I could continue. So I just kind of stop and it's carry, it carries me another month, month and a half. So next time I'm looking forward to extending that and seeing how much more I can take this thing out. Uh, with, and and again, along with antibiotics. Now I have a disease, I'm susceptible to these bugs. They're still hiding in nooks and crannies in my lungs and sinuses somewhere. They will come back. That's okay, I've got tools. So anyways, really good news with the phage and the inhaled antibiotics. Awesome combo. A uh, couple other things. Um, <clears throat> I've been mentioning in my previous videos, uh, the issues with my stomach, chronic constipation, back and forth between laxative, heavy laxatives, constipation, not being able to eat. Uh, you know, my wife 
had twins, and she would even tell me, like, I look pregnant. You know, that's coming from a woman who had, who had twins, so. And I was in so much, I was in so much, I was in physical pain, <clears throat> and when you just have, when you're backed up like that, it starts affecting your mood, uh, your thoughts. It's, it's a recipe for disaster. It sucks. So I had tried a lot of things, lots of cleanses, um, some diet changes, nothing seemed to work. And it was recommended to me, hey, have you tried gluten-free? I'm like, uh, no, I love pizza and sandwiches. Why would I be gluten-free, right? So I, I just, having no other option, I'm like, whatever, I'll, I'll do it. I'll tell you, in three days of not having any gluten, um, I felt better and I had like one of the biggest dumps of my life. Remember, you're on a CF channel, so we're going to talk a lot about poop and coughing up stuff, so get over it. So uh, I had this great bowel movement. I'm like, okay, let's hope this isn't just a, a, like a, just a shift in the body, right? I have been regular, and this has been, have I been on three or four weeks of not having any gluten in my diet? And I go every day, and it's amazing. I eat more food than I've ever eaten before because I'm able to because it's coming out. It's really great to go to the bathroom and say, oh, yeah, that's about about how much I ate, you know. Uh, yeah, so we're talking graphic stuff here, but that's just the reality of this disease. It, you know, you got to go to the bathroom. You got to do it. So I'm going every day. It's changed so much for me. Uh, another change, <clears throat> sometime in the last two weeks, uh, my pancreas kicked in again. Sounds real. I don't know. Now I think about it. All those kind of coincide with I stopped eating gluten, but I haven't been uh, insulin dependent. In fact, I learned this. I was actually playing, uh, I was on stage, I was playing guitar at church, and I almost passed out on stage. And when after, I mean, I almost tripped. It was awful. I just felt terrible. I had my insulin pump at the time because I needed it. After we walked off stage, I checked my blood sugar. You know, I've got my uh, glucometer here. Checked it, and I was like 40 something. That's not like that's really bad. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. It's typically knowing what I had eaten wouldn't have caused that type of drop. So again. I took my pump off that week and I haven't had it on since. So once again, I'm insulin free uh, or I'm not dependent. I don't know how to word that, but my diabetes seems to be in check. I go to the bathroom every day. My lung function is the, a new and like a record for me. I haven't been in the hospital in oh, go, coming in on closing in on nine months of no hospitalizations and Honestly, I don't feel that in sight right now. I feel amazing. So it's time to work out. It's time to really kick on the diet. I mean, I eat a lot, but there's only so much you can do when you're not expending that energy. I need to be redirecting this energy uh, back to some weightlifting, um, which I'm really looking forward to starting. And... Uh, yeah, okay, so that's that's the objective stuff I wanted to share. I'll keep this video, I'm going to end it here, but I want to do a new video really soon here. I want to talk more about like my quality of life. I've talked a lot about statistics and numbers and symptoms and all that. I really want to cover how much my life has changed this year um, from being, you know, being a husband and a father and although I'm not, I'm not working full time anymore, what, what this time has allowed me to do with my health and my personal life and, and some of the goals and things that I'm working on. So love to share that with you all. For those who may be more interested in that, I know sometimes this topic can be a bit dry because I'm not, it's not too personal, but uh, anyways, expect that sometime in this soon i'm not going to give you any etas because I'm, I'm really enjoying life right now and i just do these videos when i'm feeling up to it so uh, for any of you out there who are considering phage hit me up i've always put my email i've got an instagram account cf phage therapy message me uh pat my email it's uh what i only know what my <clears throat> other email is let me get it for you here 
uh, patrickfageinfo at gmail.com. Uh, I've had some people contact me about it. I actually had one person go and try it out. Um, um, didn't work out with how they expected, but it doesn't mean that it won't work for them in the future. So for anyone just out there considering it, you have questions, hit me up. I'd love to answer them best I can. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not even sure if there are any true experts in this yet. I mean, think about it. The, uh, the iPath Center, um, uh, Stephanie Strathy's really been starting this uh, phase treatment center out of San Diego. Um, I've been in contact with her saying, hey, I'm open for, for whenever you guys are ready for me. I'll, I'll come and talk to you. So that should be in a few months. Maybe I'll hear from her. I'll follow up with her. So it's, it's so new, you know, for uh, the general community and, and getting CF patients involved in this. Because for me, it has been a godsend. I feel incredible. Uh, I want others to, to have this opportunity if it'll work for them. You don't have to have CF. If you've got a, bu a, a bug, you've got a bug that's just resistant to antibiotics, hit me up. I might be able to direct you to the person or the, who you need to go to to get what you need. Okay, I'm gonna, this video is going on too long, uh, but yeah, keep an eye out for that video uh, talking more about my life. All right, peace out.